This conference will now be recorded. Okay, Joel, the floor is yours if you want to start your screen sharing. All right, can you guys see the screen? Just hit me a yes in those comments. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about activities to lift the spirit. Um, some of them are community activities and some of them are just things that you can do in your own home. Well, let me, I'm trying to change my, ah, okay, there we go. So um, just the agenda for this uh, presentation, we're gonna go over giving hope, giving hope to yourself and to your neighbors and to your community, um, giving hope with various activities to engage the community, community to knit a bond of unity. We're gonna go over some scavenger hunts that are geared towards the kids, but they're really great fun for adults. Um, ways to engage the neighborhood with humor and good fun through social engagement. And going out while staying in, do you guys miss date night? Um, we're going to talk about some activities you can do at home for date night and uh, some of them you can even crack open a nice bottle of wine um if you guys are watching too much tiger king and need to 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 educate yourself a little bit and get some art and culture uh we've got some great opportunities to enrich yourself in art and culture and history and if you are homeschooling your kids like I am, and you're tired of traditional homeschool or traditional classroom work, we have some things for you to take a break and take them on a virtual field trip. Also, uh, we're gonna talk about supporting some local initiatives um, here that uh, a lot of the nonprofit educational organizations in our community are doing to keep you guys engaged and updated on things that we're doing. And then when, uh, oh, and uh, Ollie is actually offering some really great opportunities for adults um, through April and May that are actually going to be free. I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit. And then when all else fails, you can make a TikTok or at least waste some time um, viewing some. So Governor Kay Ivey announced in early April the Ribbons of Hope campaign. And um, basically, the Ribbons of Hope campaign is to symbolize having faith, um in our community that we're going to get through this and and hope and to remember to pray for all the essential workers and the the medical emergency teams that are responding to this crisis now what she wants you to do is she wants you to use ribbon that you already have maybe from a past uh, celebration it doesn't have to be um, any certain color uh, a rainbow of colors but she just wants you to tie that ribbon that around your a tree in your front yard or maybe a pole in your front yard or to your mailbox just um, to show that we're all in this together. Uh, other ways that you can engage your community to inspire hope is to um, paint hope rocks. We've all seen, this is not a new concept. Um, these rocks, uh, there's lots of communities out there that actually join and do them. We've done them as library programs here before, but you paint the rock and you either can put hope on there or an inspirational message. You can put them in your front yard or if you're taking walks to, to keep busy and to, to kind of give yourself some exercise, you can place them throughout the community for people to find and for people to see. Um, another um, display that's sweeping the nation is the happy heart display. This actually is going to kind of goes hand in hand with the rainbow um, display or the rainbow scavenger hunt. Basically, you're just putting hearts up into your window to let your community know um, that we're going to get through this together, you know, uh, that we're all in this together. I think that's the main focus of this, that even though we're apart, we're together, right? So some fun things, um, this isn't just for kids, it can be for adults too, is the rainbow scavenger hunt. And what people are doing are creating elaborate rainbow displays and putting them up in their windows. And like I said, it kind of goes with that happy heart where you can do um, a rainbow of hearts. Some people are just doing rainbows and you put them up in your window. There are actually Facebook groups geared towards these. Um, I've included that on this slide, uh, a rainbow hunt Facebook group. So you can see where people have taken um, pictures of the rainbows that they've put up in their windows and um, and then shared them with social media communities. Uh, but it's also, if you're participating in this, you can let people know you're participating. So when they go on their scavenger hunt, they know areas best to look. Now, I think probably the most prominent scavenger hunt, especially here, is the Bear Hunt Adventure. There's actually a Bear Hunt Adventure Facebook group where you can see um, people participating. Uh, we actually have, 
one or two bears um, tied to a tree um, in the front of the library. But this has been when we first uh, were quarantined and we were all in isolation. I think this was like one of the first that really kind of caught on was this bear hunt, uh, scavenger hunt. And so it's lots of fun. People are putting them in their windows. They're putting them in um, in their yards. Some have gone overboard. I've seen where people are putting like hordes of bears out. Like every bear that they have in their house is going out, out in their front yard. And so that's good fun. Now I didn't include on this slide, but I know like communities like out in Hoax Bluff have created scavenger hunts um, talking about various uh, landmarks that, well, not traditional landmarks, but people would be familiar with like somebody's bass mailbox or um, a, there's a sign at Mikasita's, um, I, I can't remember exactly what the sign says. I don't actually live in Hoax Bluff, but a coworker was telling me about it. And so you guys can look for some of these scavenger hunts that are specific to your communities as well. They're a lot, a lot of fun. Now, this can be a, a part of a scavenger hunt, but also just part of lifting the spirits, um, the art crawls that are going on. The kids are doing sidewalk chalk, uh, but they're also creating art pieces and they're putting them in their windows. They're posting them on social media. Um, even local artists are getting in on the fun. There's a local artist who's actually painting a mural on the fence um, across from the library next to the park. Um, and so, uh, you could just check those out. And then another another like idea that's kind of sweeping the neighborhoods to kind of entertain and engage your neighbors is to create an elaborate door display, um, a door decorating. Uh, you could probably even make it a contest in your community if you're really close to your neighbors, see who can outdo the other. Um, I've seen where people are putting out their Christmas decorations and holiday decorations, just something to kind of liven up the, the neighborhood and keep it light, but also to have fun. Now, this next one, um, this actually been isolation outing. It started in Australia. People started dressing up um, in their finest, you know, you can see like this um, one lady's in her wedding dress and other ones are ready for, for a gala or a ball and others are dressing up as superheroes. Some people are just dressing up in their Sunday best, but a reason to, to put your makeup on, put your face on and do your hair or have fun with it to take out your trash. Um, it's really fun. Uh, it's gotten to where like neighbors are waiting to see, well, what are they gonna have on when they take out their trash today? And kids are uh, looking forward to it. So um, I actually know a few people uh, that have done this already and it's all in great fun. So if you're bored, next time you go to take your trash out or take it to the road, go ahead and put on your best to do it and participate in the good fun. There's also a Facebook group for this. The Ben, it's called Ben Isolation Outing. Um, there's a Facebook group and so you can take your pictures and post that there as well. Um, now, I know everybody who's at home, they're tired of being at home. You wanna go out, um, even I think the most of going out is some of us who are still going to work. Um, sometimes if you don't feel like cooking, you might call in some takeout and go pick that up, but uh, but we're not really connecting with our partner like we're staring at our partners all day long, but we're not really connecting with them. So we need to maybe try going out while staying in. Um, now there's a really awesome event tomorrow, um, Saturday, April 18th. It's put on by the World Health Organization and Global Citizen. It was curated by Lady Gaga. And this actually, it reminds me of Live Aid. If, if you guys remember Live Aid back in the 80s, where artists came together to do one massive benefit concert. So this is, is a benefit concert, but you can still watch and not give if, if that's what, what you wanna do. Um, as you can see the lineup, I mean, Adam Lambert, Alicia Keys, John Legend's in there, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Keith Urban, um, Rita Ora, Sam Smith. I mean, there's comedians in there. Uh, Jimmy Fallon's the presenter or the host. And so that's tomorrow. It It's gonna be streaming live at several different um, outlets. So Amazon Prime Video, Facebook Live, Instagram, and you guys can see them there on the screen, YouTube. And so that might be a nice, a nice epic concert for you guys to stay out while, go, while going in and, and, you know, maybe dress up in your, your concert gear and get you some good food and maybe a glass of wine or, and then uh, enjoy a nice concert. 
the other things you can do to stay out while going in or going going out while staying in um if you're if you like music uh billboard has all uh they have all these streaming live music events they're listed on their website i've included um, the link in this presentation for uh, it's a direct link to the list of all the the artists on there. There there's so many to speak of, but then also the Kennedy Center, the Kennedy Center, um, they have so many events um, live streaming, so many live performances, um, live performance by John Legend. They've got theater events on there, stand up comedy on there. Um, it's pretty elaborate, and so you could have a nice date night visiting one of these. Now, for a richer experience, um, lots of the different museums have have gone virtual with a lot of content. They already had a lot of content on their, their websites um, anyway, but they've even kind of added to that experience. The Smithsonian um, has a multitude of virtual tours and online exhibits, including a 3D portal. Now, I've checked out this 3D portal. Uh, portal. I, I looked at uh, Triceratops actually um, just this morning. Um, but what you can do is you can explore pieces from the Museum um, of Natural History as well as the the Institute as well. And you can get a I must. It's not. I wouldn't say a live in-person experience, but um, you definitely get a 3D experience checking out all that art. They also have um, live. Um, events, story times, and other educational activities as such, and you can view um, just about all of their exhibits virtually. You can be inspired maybe and have a night out at the museum, or you can dress up and go to the Met, um, or dress down and go to the Met. The Metropolitan Museum is celebrating 150 years of housing priceless pieces of art and um, period collections, and it has them, it has them online for viewing. Um, they've also launched the Met360 project, which allows you to immerse yourself and explore some of the spaces in the Met. Um, so that's really cool. This picture actually on this is from the 360 project. And so it's really worth checking out. It, there's a lot of really great stuff on there, but we can't forget the kids, right? And who am I kidding? This isn't just for kids. I don't know about you guys, but I, I like going to the zoo and the aquarium um, and seeing the exhibits and learning about the animals. It's really great family time, but, but it's also just, it's cool, it's fun. So you can take a break from your traditional classroom work uh, and go on a field trip to the zoo. Uh, many zoos are offering virtual field trips, but they also have live webcams and their various animal um, habitats. And several zoos have taken what they normally would have planned for, for live shows or activities and turned them into virtual programs such, um, so you can like feeding time, you can watch where they feed various animals, they have various animal education snippets. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Now, some of my favorite zoos for their, their virtual content, uh, the San Diego Zoo is doing a really great job, for their uh, virtual content and the Maryland Zoo at Baltimore is doing a great job. You can actually visit both of their websites and get uh, their their live show postings um, because they are at certain times. And so that's really awesome. And much like the zoos, aquariums have like stepped up and they are doing an amazing job. I mean, they were doing an amazing job before with their online content, um, but they've just kind of amped it up and added to it. With uh, live webcams, you can check out uh, like what the sharks are doing or you the jellyfish one, I wanna say at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, um, the jellyfish live web webcam is very relaxing. If you are having a stressful moment, just go to that webcam and zone out for a little bit and it's the ultimate de-stressor. It is very, very calming. Um, but they've done a, a, a fantastic job, both Monterey Aquarium, Georgia Aquarium, um, of engaging viewers with their online content. Um, so you guys should check that out also. And it's actually one of my favorite websites to, I use this um, for, for programs here at the library just for inspiration is NASA. NASA has an amazing online platform, not just educational resources, but online viewing tools as well. Um, viewing moments in history, things that are going on now. Uh, so I, I really encourage everybody just to check that out. 
also, if you are an artist, either young or old, um, Mo Willems through the Kennedy Center is doing um, a live showing every day at lunchtime. So Mo Willems is the creator of the Love Children's Characters, Elephant and Piggy. If you guys don't know anything about those, um, it's, it's just a fun book series for the kids, but Mo Willems is doing lunch doodles. Um, so every day at lunchtime, he's doing a doodle session. Um, and so it's really worth checking out. Now, if you wanna know where I get a lot of my resources from here, especially if you're homeschooling or you have grandchildren, um, lifescience.com and uh, weareteachers.com are really great uh, websites to visit just for ideas um, and inspiration. So, but we can't forget what our local, our local organizations are doing. Um, I just, I included uh, Gadsden Public Library because I'm, you know, resident here at Gadsden Public Library and the children's director um, and the Gadsden Museum of Art. Now the Gadsden Public Library, we have so many Facebook pages. Um, it's a little insane. Uh, the kids have their own Facebook page. The teen has their own Facebook page. The adult has their own Facebook page. But what we're, we are doing here is we're flooding our, our Facebook pages with live events. Um, I don't know if you've checked any of our live events out, but I'm doing live story times and live chapter book read alouds, um, live art lessons, live, you know, science, um, a live Lego challenge. Now the Gadsden Museum, Museum of Art, they are also doing live content as well. It's funny because I miss Jill and there's Miss Jill over at the Gadsden Museum of Art, um, but she's doing a really great job of posting live content to their Facebook. And I think they just had, um, well, I know they did because my son um, posted a picture, but but they're doing their uh, Art GMA 2020 contest on um, on Facebook, and so kids have drawn or painted or created their art and posted the picture. And I think whoever gets the most likes is going to win something or another. But um, but it's a way to see something new, something you haven't seen before. So that's really nice. And then I actually reached out to Ollie the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute um, over at the University of Alabama to see what they were doing online, not just for members, but just in general. And it turns out that starting Tuesday in April and May, um, and now they're doing free classes. So you don't have to be a member. Now, Ollie is geared towards um, the 50 and older crowd and membership costs $50 a year. Um, and that's for the membership package. You can take unlimited classes. They offer a variety. But what they're doing for April and May is they've opened up registration for anyone. So you don't have to pay that $50 membership fee. Now, um, the, they have a chunk of classes that are geared towards Zoom basics, learning how to do Zoom meetings, um, because that's the platform that they're using. And then Ted Sexton is gonna do a series on a state of emergency. And then after that, they're doing various one hour sessions. I actually have a slide. It doesn't have all of the sessions they're doing because um, then it, it would have made those little, uh, that smart art much, much smaller. Um, but you can see on the Zoom Basics the days and times that they're doing Zoom Basics and then the days and times they're doing a state of emergency. But then they're doing fun and creative ones, just little one hour one offs. Um, jellyfish uh, through the lens, it's travel, Alabama players of World War II, um, the shadow of war and tariffs and sanctions uh, with China, just various uh, various little one hour classes uh, and that's going to be on the Zoom platform. That's why there's so many Zoom basic classes. So if you want to get in on that, I highly suggest that you take one of those Zoom basic classes to really learn about the platform. That way when you, if you attend the other classes that they're offering that you can really get the most out of it. Now to register, you just go to um, the Ollie through the University of Alabama and register for the classes. I believe I I have, a, I have a link on the previous slide. So, and then all if, if all else fails and you haven't, and, and you, you're virtual field tripped out, you visited the museum several times and, and you've watched so much online streaming music, it's not even funny and your, your sidewalks become a blur with chalk and you have no more window space in your, uh, in your living room to, to post your inspiring art or, and uh, you've dressed up one too many times to take out the trash, there's TikTok. Now, I, I was skeptical at first. Um, the teen director here was TikTok, TikTok. And I'm like, I was, I was actually, I was like, what is this TikTok? I'm so tired of hearing it. So I'm not gonna, I wasn't gonna download it. And then I was like, okay, well, I, you know, 
I'm going to see what it's about at least. And so I downloaded the app. Now it is an app. It's available on all major um, mobile platforms. Um, so I, I downloaded it through the Apple store. Um, you can download it through the Android store. Um, and so you can actually go to tiktok.com and watch from your computer if you just want to watch. Uh, and so this TikTok, it was really geared towards the younger crowd, the teens and the young adults. Um, they were doing dances to, to voiceovers on there. They're just like little snippets. Um, and it was a new platform for them. I think they had gotten pushed off Facebook and Instagram and Twitter by, by everybody else. So it, it's a new platform for young people. But now that everybody's at home, it's become a platform for everybody. I've actually watched videos where entire generations have created a video together. We're talking a dad who, who can't dance and he's like, I don't even know what's going on. I don't even know what this is. But, uh, but doing it with his daughter, you know, uh, something that she asked him to do and so he did it. Uh, I've seen grandmas and and second generation and children and everybody getting in on this fun. Uh, a lot of celebrities and their families have, have made TikTok videos. So there are these little videos and it's not, you're not speaking, act, well, some people do original sound, but um, you actually use sound that's available within the app and then you post your videos and some of it is, it can be a little adult rated some of the content word wise because I don't know if you've listened to a lot of rap music but most of it is not PG so there's a, a good bit of rap music on there um, but it's worth checking out if you need to waste 10 minutes of your time uh, because uh, everybody's everybody's gotten on on it it's become a way for people to really kind of stay together even though we're all apart and that is actually all I have for you today um, Emily says, on the subject of really good relaxing live webcams, uh, Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park is running live webcams of their tropical conservatory as well as educational videos from various staff. That's a really great resource. Thank you, Emily. Does anybody else have any um, questions or comments? I feel like I should be speaking while I'm waiting for someone to to come through. Um, do you guys think any of these resources are resources that you would use? Oh, you're welcome, Kathy. Oh, awesome, Emily. That's really good to hear. And I expect to see everyone in this, and I expect to see everyone in this call using TikTok soon. TikTok, yes. Well, and if you're curious about it, if you go to the um, the GPL Teens um, Teen Zone Facebook page, they created a a TikTok for washing your hands, um, and so it's it it was really cute. I think I shared it. I don't I don't know if I shared it to the children's Facebook page, but I know I shared it to my personal Facebook page. Oh, your children love to make TikToks. It's it's hilarious. It really is uh, really hilarious. Um, we were talking earlier. I don't know if you guys have watched the Tiger King yet. Um, it's it is very disturbing. You just can't take your eyes off of it. But there's a lot of uh, TikToks on there making fun of the Tiger King and Carol Baskin. It's really fun. I actually started to I started to start off my presentation with like, hey there, you cool cats and kittens. But then I didn't. Um, but you know, maybe next time. Yes, Kathy, pass on all the information to your friends, um, especially on the Zoom. Um, I spoke with Lois, um, I can't pronounce her last name, uh, Strachan, I think it is. Um, she's the program coordinator over there at University of Alabama for Ollie, and she was excited to share the information. Um, and so uh, I expect to, to hear more about that, especially through uh, various um, outlets that get information out to our community. And I was curious, Jill, on some of the um, uh, the museums and the other exhibits and things. Are there any fees associated with those? To, no. To pay? No, it's all free. Um, that it's free, so that's nice. Well, oh, I yeah. say that it's free. I didn't go into the three hundred and sixty. Uh, project with the Met. So I'm going to assume it's free if they've put it on there. Um, now I know the Smithsonian, it's, it, that's all free. 
but I'm going to assume that the Met's free too, because I was in there looking around at the art. They have a really good, um, like rock of ages collection in there. And, uh, and so nothing ever popped up or prompted me to join or give or, you know, so it was nice. Okay, good, good. I know that the uh, Ocean Voyager camera at the Georgia Aquarium is definitely one of my favorites. Is it? Yeah. I mean, you could just sit and watch that all day long. I mean, I know I could. It's just, it's kind of like, what are they going to do? You know, it's, it's, it's just relaxing. It's something to do. And like some of these places like, um, like the Met, I, I doubt I'll ever make it to the Met. Um, right now our family vacations are centered around the kids maybe when um maybe when they're an adult uh when they're both adults i i can get out and explore a little bit more but so it's nice to see some things that i may not see in person um almost as if i were seeing it in person yeah well Jilly, thank you so much for taking me taking your morning on this friday to talk to everybody and kind of show my resources that, that's really cool i think i'm going to check out the uh uh the concert tomorrow night and some other those concerts too that sounds yes. really neat oh i do have one other thing jill that you should probably know about i was i thought about it when you said something and then forgot until just now we'll say something about concerts tripped it there is a youtube channel called the show must go on and every Friday, they are releasing a Broadway show streaming for free for 48 hours that you can watch at your house. Last week, it was, oh, Jesus Christ Superstar. This week, this Friday, it's Phantom of the Opera. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Thank you, Will. I was trying to figure out how to get it off the screen. Oh, sorry. I didn't do that. Yeah, it's fine, though. Okay, so... Um, Philip said he's going to check out the zoo and the aquarium today. So yeah, that'd be cool. Fun. That is so much fun. And thank you for sharing all of those other great resources. I mean, I think it's one thing to kind of know tidbits here and there, but then to really kind of see what what's worth going to because the I don't know about you guys, but the social media and internet's just been flooded flooded with resources for virtual content, which is all all great, but it can be a little overwhelming sometimes. So if you can kind of just wade through of what's really great, aside from like, oh, well, maybe I'll check that out if I have a minute, um, then it's nice. It's nice to know what's credible, what's out there. Yeah, and you guys in the call, make, make sure you share this you know, with your friends, families, neighbors, everyone, because I mean, the more people can get involved and, um, and stay busy and do things with their family, the better off we are. I mean, staying busy yes. and keeping your mind active during all this. Yes, and I mean, and if you guys do any of the um, the art forward um, or even taking out the trash dressed up, um, feel free to share them to our social media page. We would love to see, especially if your children are doing sidewalk art or window art or you've decorated your door, we would love to see those. And I think the more that we put out that people are doing these kind of things, the more that we'll be like, oh, well, maybe I'll do this too. And um, and we can really, we become a, a tight knit community. We instead of just like, ah, oh, stay away from me. We're, we're all in this together, you know? Yeah, and the uh, the bear hunt was really, really neat. I saw, I saw you when I kind of first started get, getting some traction here in downtown, a lot of people were doing it. And, uh, yes. A neighbor down the street, he's actually a teacher here locally, and he, he and his kids put, uh, they made, basically, they made paper cut out bears. Oh, and, each, and each decorated them different ways. So there's like your normal kind of coney bear, and there's one that's like a rabbit bear. It's it's a mess, and they put them all in their windows, of their house. That is fun. That that's yeah. a good time. I mean, and I mean, you have to give the kids a break if you're, especially if you're homeschooling them right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they the schools have sent out these thick packets of things that they have to do by the end of the year. I know my son; they're doing um, Google Classroom as their platform. And so there's uh, IXL and lots, I mean, it's, it's a lot, which, which is fine. I do not want my child to be behind when we start in the fall. And I'm a proponent of public school. And so um, homeschool has really never been something that we've considered. And so it's, it was a, like a learning curve at first, but now we're in the swing of things. But you still, you have to give them a break because even, even if they're going to public school, they've got their PE and their recess and their snacks and their lunch, but they also have field trips field trips that they're all missing now. So um, so you still kind of have to do things to reward them for all their, their efforts, so. Yeah, well, 
if there, unless there's any more questions, we can kind of wrap up, I guess. Any more questions, guys? Anybody want to chime in and say anything to the greater good? You're welcome, Philip. Okay, well, I guess that's it for the questions. Jill, thank you again so much for taking this time and sharing that with us. Um, thank as you I, for as I, Yeah, as I mentioned in the chat earlier, the first chat I posted, um, as with all of, our, all of our other webinars, we'll have the uh, the recording posted to our uh, web, website later today once the video is done processing. It'll be at uh, edwardchamber.org forward slash COVID19. That's one nine. So I'm going to stop the recording there.